the nothing, the cradle of all things. From the depths of absolute darkness, a place beyond form, time, or memory, we encounter the beginning. Here, in the nothing, where nothing exists yet all things are contained, lies the origin of everything that ever was, is, or will be. This nothing is not a barren emptiness, but a profound, pregnant silence, alive with infinite possibilities. Like a cosmic womb, it births galaxies, stars, and life itself, and one day, it will reclaim all it has created. Imagine this vastness, not a nothing to be feared, but a space vibrating with potential. It is the pause before the first heartbeat, the breath before the first word, the stillness that gives rise to movement. To ancient civilizations, this was not a concept to debate, but a truth to revere. They wove it into their myths, their rituals, and the very fabric of their understanding of existence. The nothing, to them, was sacred, a force that shaped the cosmos, the gods, and life itself. But this knowledge, as profound as it was, did not survive unchanged. The cataclysms of history and the march of time buried much of it, leaving behind only fragments of a truth once central to human understanding. How did this happen? And how are we, in modern times, beginning to rediscover what was almost lost? The ancients and the mystery of the nothing. For the ancients, the nothing was not an abstract concept. It was a living presence, intertwined with their understanding of the world and their place within it. They observed it in the cycles of nature, the rising and setting of the sun, the ebb and flow of the tides, the birth, death, and rebirth of life. To them, the nothing was both origin and destiny, the space where all things begin and to which all things return. This truth permeated their myths, art, and rituals. Gobekli Tepe, Humanity's Earliest Reverence One of the most enigmatic remnants of humanity's early relationship, Gobekli Tepe, a ceremonial site in modern-day Turkey, built over 11,000 years ago. This was not a settlement, it was something far greater. Perched on a hilltop, Gobekli Tepe was a sanctuary, a place where humans gathered to honor forces they could feel but not see. Its towering stone pillars, arranged in concentric circles, are adorned with intricate carvings of animals and symbols, each seemingly rich with meaning. The people who built Gobekli Tepe had no wheels, no metal tools, and no agriculture. Yet they labored for centuries, carving and arranging these stones with an intention that transcends mere survival. What compelled them? Perhaps it was their awareness of something greater, a force that gave rise to life, sustained it, and eventually reclaimed it. The circular design of the site mirrors the cycles of existence, suggesting that its builders understood life as a journey from the nothing to being and back again. Gobekli Tepe is a testament to humanity's early spiritual sophistication. Even in a time of material scarcity, these people sought to connect with the unseen. They may not have had words for it, but they felt the presence of the nothing, a sacred force that underpins all existence. As we stand before the ruins of Gobekli Tepe today, we are reminded that our ancestors, thousands of years ago, were grappling with the same profound questions we face now. Where do we come from? Where do we go? The Sumerians, Chaos and the Birth of the Cosmos. Centuries later, as the chaos of the Younger Dryas began to subside, civilizations like the Sumerians emerged in Mesopotamia. These early city builders carried fragments of ancient knowledge, preserving them in the form of myths, rituals, and monumental architecture. Central to their worldview was the idea of chaos as the womb of creation, a concept embodied by the goddess Tiamat. In Sumerian mythology, Tiamat was the primordial ocean, vast and formless, containing the seeds of all that exists. From her depths emerged the gods, who created the world through a violent struggle. The slaying of Tiamat by the god Marduk symbolized the triumph of order over chaos, but it also reflected a deeper truth, that creation and destruction are inseparable. Without chaos, there can be no order. Without the nothing, there can be no life. The Sumerians' ziggurats, massive stepped temples, served as bridges between the earthly and the divine. These structures symbolized humanity's connection to the infinite, a recognition that all life flows from the nothing and will one day return to it. Inside these temples, priests performed rituals to maintain balance, ensuring the continued flow of life from the unseen into the visible world. For the Sumerians, chaos was not something to be feared, but something to be honored. Their myths remind us that the nothing is not a void at all, 
It is a space of infinite potential, a place where the seeds of creation lie waiting. Egypt, the infinite waters of none. While the Sumerians saw chaos as a force to be tamed, the Egyptians embraced it as a harmonious presence. To them, the nothing was not a battlefield, but a sea of infinite potential. They called it Nun, the primeval waters that surrounded and permeated all things. Nun was eternal, existing before time itself. From these waters emerged Adam, the first god, who created the world by sheer will. The Egyptians saw the cycles of nature, the flooding of the Nile, the rising and setting of the sun, as reflections of Nun's eternal rhythm. Every dawn was a rebirth, every sunset a return to the nothing. Their pyramids, aligned with the stars, were not just tombs but cosmic gateways, designed to guide the pharaoh's soul back to none. Death, to the Egyptians, was not an end but a transformation, a return to the source, the infinite ocean from which all life arose. Their funerary texts, like the Book of the Dead, describe the soul's journey through the afterlife as a path of transformation. The soul must navigate challenges, shedding its earthly attachments, until it is ready to merge with the infinite. This journey mirrors the cycles of life and death, creation and dissolution, that are central to Egyptian cosmology. For the Egyptians, the nothing was not an absence, but a presence, a reminder that all things are connected by an eternal thread. It was the space where life begins and ends, the heart of existence itself. Eastern Perspectives, Shunya and the Tao while the Sumerians and Egyptians built monuments to honor the nothing, civilizations in the East turned inward, exploring its presence within the human mind and the natural world. In ancient India, the concept of the nothing was expressed through the word shunya, meaning zero or emptiness. But to the Indian sages, shunya was far from an absence. It was fullness, an infinite space of potential from which all things emerge. In Hindu philosophy, this emptiness was closely tied to Brahman, the ultimate reality that underlies all existence. Brahman is described as formless, eternal, and unchanging, a force that is everywhere and nowhere at once. For the ancient mystics, Shunya was not merely a concept to ponder, but an experience to be realized. Through practices like meditation and yoga, they sought to quiet the mind, peel away the illusions of the material world, and touch the nothing within. Later, Buddhism expanded on this understanding with the concept of Sunyata, or emptiness. The Buddha taught that all things are interconnected and impermanent, arising and dissolving like waves on an infinite ocean. Enlightenment, he said, was the realization of this truth, that the self is an illusion and all distinctions are constructs. By letting go of attachment and desire, one could return to the stillness of the nothing, a state of profound peace and liberation. Meanwhile, in ancient China, the Taoists embraced a similar understanding of the nothing. The Tao, often translated as the Way, was described as the source of all things, a force that flows through the universe yet remains invisible and unknowable. Laozi, the legendary author of the Tao Te Ching, wrote that the Tao is like an empty vessel, endlessly useful because it is empty. It is the nothing that allows all things to exist, the silence that gives rise to sound. Taoist philosophy celebrated the principle of Wu Wei, or effortless action. This idea teaches that true harmony comes not from forcing or controlling, but from aligning oneself with the natural flow of the Tao. Like a river moving around rocks, the Taoist sage embraces the nothing, allowing it to guide their actions with grace and simplicity. In this way, the Tao reflects the same truths as Shunya and Sunyata, that the nothing is not separate from life, but is its essence. The Younger Dryas, Cataclysm and Loss But this profound understanding of the nothing, so deeply woven into the myths and philosophies of ancient cultures, was not immune to the forces of nature. Around 12,800 years ago, as the Earth transitioned out of the last ice age, the planet was rocked by a sudden and catastrophic event, the Younger Dryas. Glaciers surged, temperatures plummeted, and ecosystems collapsed. Forests withered into deserts, fertile lands froze, and rising sea levels swallowed coastal regions. For humanity, it was a time of chaos and upheaval, a struggle simply to survive. Entire cultures were displaced, their settlements abandoned, their knowledge lost. Oral traditions, sacred rituals, and philosophical insights that had been passed down for generations were interrupted or erased. The great truths of the nothing, once central to human understanding, began to fade into obscurity. Yet, 
not all was lost. In places like the Fertile Crescent, where humanity clung to life, fragments of this ancient wisdom endured. Sites like Gobekli Tepe, built just after the Younger Dryas, suggest that early humans were determined to preserve their connection to the sacred, even in the face of unimaginable hardship. These early monuments became vessels of memory, carrying forward the essence of the nothing in symbols and structures that would inspire future civilizations. The Younger Dryas serves as a reminder that knowledge, no matter how profound, can be fragile. It also reminds us of humanity's resilience our ability to adapt, rebuild, and rediscover the truths that connect us to the infinite. Modern rediscovery, the nothing in science and spirituality today. As we look to the stars and delve into the smallest particles of matter, we are beginning to rediscover what the ancients intuited, that behind all things lies an infinite nothing. Modern science, with its telescopes, particle accelerators, and equations, has revealed a universe that mirrors the mysteries of the past. In the realm of quantum physics, we find a startling parallel to the concept of the nothing. Scientists have discovered that particles, the building blocks of matter, blink in and out of existence, emerging from what is often described as a quantum field, an invisible space of pure potential. This quantum field, much like the nothing, is everywhere and nowhere, containing the seeds of all that exists. Cosmology too, echoes ancient wisdom. The Big Bang Theory, which describes the origin of the universe, tells us that everything we see today, every star, every galaxy, every atom, emerged from an infinitesimally small point of infinite density. This primordial state, often compared to nothingness, was the beginning of time and space, the moment when the potential of the nothing burst into being. In neuroscience and mindfulness, we find yet another rediscovery of the nothing. Practices like meditation, which have been used for millennia to quiet the mind, reveal that beneath the noise of thought lies a profound stillness, a nothing that is not empty but alive with awareness. Mystics and scientists alike have noted that this state of stillness mirrors the nature of the universe itself, infinite, interconnected, and ever-present. As we connect these modern discoveries to the wisdom of the ancients, a remarkable picture begins to emerge. The nothing is not a relic of the past or a concept confined to temples and myths. It is here, now, woven into the fabric of existence. It is the silence behind the noise, the stillness beneath the chaos, the infinite potential that waits patiently for us to notice. Rediscovering the nothing across centuries and continents, through shifting sands of time and the rise and fall of civilizations, one truth has endured quietly waiting in the spaces between words and in the pauses of history. The nothing is the essence of all existence. It is not a void to be feared, but a force to be embraced. It is the silent breath that moves through the cosmos, the unseen rhythm that connects the stars above to the thoughts within us. In the nothing, we find not absence but infinite potential, a cradle of possibility where all things begin and all things return. The ancients understood this, they felt it in the cycles of nature, observed it in the stars, and expressed it through stone, song, and ritual. Gobekli Tepe, with its concentric pillars, stood as an early monument to this awareness, a circle that reflected the endless cycle of creation, dissolution, and rebirth. In the myths of the Sumerians, the chaos of Tiamat gave birth to order, echoing the dynamic creativity of the nothing. The Egyptians revered the waters of Nun, eternal and alive, flowing with the rhythms of life and death. And in the East, the meditations on Shunya and the Tao revealed the profound stillness that underpins all movement. These civilizations spoke different languages, worshipped different gods, and lived in different worlds, yet they shared a common truth. The nothing is the source. It is not an idea to be captured, but a presence to be experienced, a force that flows through us, connecting the individual to the infinite. But time has a way of burying what is sacred. The great cataclysms of history, like the Younger Dryas, fractured humanity's connection to this truth. As survival became paramount and the world changed, the wisdom of the ancients receded into whispers, fragments of a once shared understanding. The monuments remained, but their meanings grew faint, like echoes of a song we no longer know how to sing. And yet the nothing is not lost. It cannot be. It is always here, in the stillness of a quiet morning, in the spaces between our thoughts, in the vastness of a starry night. 
Today, as science peers deeper into the fabric of reality and spirituality calls us inward, we are rediscovering what the ancients knew. The nothing is not separate from us. It is the essence of who we are. Conclusion Embracing the Eternal Mystery The journey of humanity is a journey into the nothing. It is where opposites converge, where chaos gives rise to order, where death nurtures life, where silence becomes sound. The nothing is not merely an end, it is a beginning. It is the canvas on which the universe paints itself, the thread that weaves through every breath, every moment, and every star. What does this mean for us now? It means we are not only observers of the nothing, but participants in its endless cycle of creation and return. When we quiet our minds, when we pause and listen, we can feel its presence within us. It is the stillness behind the noise, the silence beneath the chaos, the infinite potential that waits patiently for us to notice. The ancients built temples and told stories to honor this truth. Today we honor it in other ways, through meditation, through reflection, and through the awe we feel when we confront the unknown. The discoveries of quantum physics and neuroscience echo what was once inscribed in stone and sung in myth. The nothing is the foundation of all things, the force that unites the seen and the unseen. So as you stand here at the edge of this eternal mystery, ask yourself, what does the nothing mean to you? It is not something to be understood or explained, but something to be felt, to be known in the quiet spaces of your being. It is the cradle of creation and the destination of all journeys. It is the silence before the symphony, the breath before the word, the infinite within the finite. The nothing is waiting. And in that stillness, you might find what you have always been seeking, a connection not only to the universe around you, but to the universe within. The nothing is not separate from you. It is you. It is the thread that connects all things, the rhythm that beats through every heart and every star. From the nothing we come, and to the nothing we shall return. And in that eternal cycle, we are infinite.